And now we're back with more of Phoenix Wright Justice for All Revisited. And last time, remember, this is really the Lost Turnabout. Even, even Phoenix doesn't remember what happened. But we're about to find out. Let's go back into courtroom proceedings. September 8th, 11.43 a.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 1. Uh, Amnesia? I can't believe my lawyer's trying to spare me in such a state. your problem first. We can deal with mine later. For now, do you think you can fill me in on a few things? There goes another one. wondering if you could help me figure out a few things about myself. So, my name is... Naru Hodo Yuichi. Yeah, in the courtroom they call me Phoenix Wright. What a weird name. Thing that would 
be helpful for me to know. Um, so what can I tell you? Um, I can't think of anything other than the incident with that cell phone, but... Cell phone? Yeah, your eyes lit up when we talked about it at the detention center, sir. Hurry up, then, and tell me! This might be very important. <sighs> okay, Roger! This is Nancy. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to... <laughs> I had to just for that one. I had to do that. I had to do that one. I I I I apologize for nothing. It was on the day of the crime, just before 6 p.m. I picked up a lost cell phone while on a walk with Dustin. She's wearing a blue badger shirt. That little bastard. Can we please stop with the guitarist theme, please? All of a sudden, the phone began to ring. Um, hello? Oh, thank you. I've been searching for my phone. Is this yours? Oh, I'm glad you called. We can meet up and I can give this back. I'll be right here. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. You can call me Maggie. 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 You can tell she's a fledgling. We agreed to meet up at 6 p.m. Justin and I waited for the person to show up. But they never did. Hmm. So where is the phone you found now? I gave it to you yesterday. Huh. To me. You mean this? Do you think he has anything to do with the murder? I don't really know. But if my eyes lit up. You many girls pop their cheeks like this. No, 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 no. Let me guess, I'm supposed to know this girl too. I wonder how she looks naked. <clears throat> hey, good morning. Hey, good morning, Maggie. I think I'm going to keep that in. And a good morning to you too, Maya. So, so, how's it going? Is there a word where it's far worse than it is not? Oh? And what if I said 
that everything will be fine? That's right. It's my answer to the rescue with the ultra design and summary point evidence. There you are, Nick. The thing you wanted me to bring. Uh-huh. Ah, oh, thanks. No good. As in. That group of cars the police are currently investigating. I think the judge remembers of that group. Nameless. This is one of the men and their phone numbers. Why would a group of con artists pop up in a case like this? Don't look at me! Huh. And where did you get this list from in the first place? <laughs> what?! Don't you remember, Nick? You're the one who asked me to look this up yesterday! There's a joke in all this, I'm telling you. September 8th, 11.54 a.m., District Court, courtroom number two. Am I ever
if they feature name and if they feature name for the court witness. Before I do, I'd like to clarify a little something.
but I remind you that I am in no way a prepubescent boy out on a walk with mommy. If you must know, I am. Anyway, <clears throat> please testify to this court what you saw during your walk through the park. See, you said it again, taking a walk, you know you... Please shut this bitch up. A bitch? I happen to be a bitch. What you witnessed will do, Mr. Wellington. Cheese steak. Because you are in no way a beef steak. What you saw that day. I'm making him so just that kind of that that one type of guy you really want to punch in the face so hard. So for those who remember that one person in your life that you see that you really want to punch in the face so hard again and again and again, this is for you people. This is for you. I was at the park all afternoon, deep in thought about my life situation. I don't remember the time all that well, but I do believe it was past 6 p.m. All of a sudden, a police officer falls from above right in front of my eyes. Without a thought, I looked up and there I met the eyes of a charming young lady. Of course, I remember her sweet face. It was that of the pretty defendant over there. The only thing that, the only other thing I saw was the banana that fell with the police officer. The banana that fell. That was certainly a decisive testimony. Decisive? Rick, did you hear what he just said? Yeah. That's all you have to say? How can you be so calm? It's strange. My mind is very calm and clear. Maybe it's because I... believe in my client. You mean my gay? Yes. And if she really is innocent, then that can only mean one thing. She must be great in bed. <coughs> that guy is a douchebag. And he's lying! He's a total prick. You may now question the douchebag. I mean, witness, you know, Mr. Wright. You'll find out the truth no matter how well you craft your mind. Oh, they want to put you in a dick so hard, you ass. You fucking prick. Oh. Like, I really want to punch him in the face. He's one of those types that really make me want to punch him in the face. What I saw that day, what I saw that day, what I saw that day, what I saw that day.
banana? Well, he was actually more than just one, more like a bunch of bananas. Now, what would a bunch of bananas be doing there? And why would I know such a thing? I'm only telling you what I saw. That's really strange. Mega ain't never mentioned anything about a bunch of bananas. <laughs> That's it, Nick. He's gotta be lying about the bananas. Could be, but there's no reason for him to lie about there being bananas at the crime scene. And what if it's not a lie? Well, maybe he thought he was seeing one thing and it was something else. If he mistook something else for a bunch of bananas, then that would be an inaccuracy. Thank you. Thank you. If my client is innocent, there's no way he could have seen what he says he did. Which means if we can somehow show he's lying. Yeah. That's exactly what we need to do. She's right. She's got a sure line. Just, but I just wish I could remember who she is. There's ever been a case. One, two, three, four, five, six. You mean this? <laughs> Mr. Cheesesteak. I mean, Mr. Wellington. I believe I have the bananas you saw right here. Ah, so you knew about the bananas too? Why didn't you say so earlier? <laughs> but don't think you can pull this as a way to pull more information out of me. And that's where it gives you all. Uh, Mr. I, what is the meaning of this? This is not the page of the Doesn't it look delicious? Care for a bite?
Carry on, game. Carry on. Thank you. Your Honor, I think this proves one very important fact. This witness? Well, this witness has a bad eyes. By the way, just how bad are your eyes? Huh? Hello? Why? You... Why are you asking me about this all of a sudden? Your it's a simple mistake to be... Your honor, it's very simple to be... Get out before I butt your banana. Oh, I don't think so. Objection over... You! You're one of those people! Yes! You know what I mean! You're like those people! Used to accept Galileo for his Copernican theory. You're too used to your worldview to realize that there are other new possibilities. Sure, in the end, we find out that it is, in fact, a glove, not bananas. However, when viewed from afar, like you think there is room enough for doubt, don't you? And that's why I asked you how bad your eyesight is. <sighs> They're both 2200! I suppose you're going to tell me that's terrible, right? 2200? The fuck? Why are you not wearing your glasses today then? Um, that's because I lost it recently, you see. Of course, I was playing on getting a new pair of made right away. But, you know, my glasses are no ornament glasses, so to replace them. How about when you witnessed the crime? Were you wearing your glasses then? <laughs> How about it, witness? <laughs> you are an unrelenting evil man. You're like those people who rejected Joan of Arc and put her to death. She was brave and courageous, only to be caught by horrible, unrighteous people. And while she didn't do anything wrong, she was still gruesomely burned at this. Cheesesteak? Which boils down to you were not wearing your glasses at that time. Therefore, the identity of the woman at the scene of the crime and that of the defendant cannot be proven to be the same by this witness. <laughs> But the height difference was only nine feet! 
It was very impossible for him to see the face of the culprit standing on the upper path. Witness. Your witness. I mean, please, be more accurate in your testimony. Remember, a person's life is at stake. Be stake. Yes, Your Honor. Now then, please continue with your testimony. Please, tell the court what happened next, in the moment after you witnessed the crime. That face, y'all. That face. That face. So that's all I can say. That face. The girl on the upper path ran away as soon as she realized I was there. After that, I immediately called the police station to report the crime. It must have been 6.45 p.m. when I made the call. They must have, they must have a lot of free time on their hands since they showed up within 10 minutes. That is correct. Which is why even someone without a superior brain like mine can understand that. <laughs> that girl is the murderer! You may question the witness now, Mr. Wright. Witness is right, Your Honor. <laughs> you may question. <laughs> you may question the cheesesteak now, Mr. Wright. Oh, delicious! I shall grill him wholeheartedly and thoroughly. Mr. Cheesesteak, I mean, Mr. Wellington, would you please take a look at this? You mean the victim's autopsy report? According to this, the murder occurred at 6.28 p.m. So what of it? 
You said that you called the police immediately after the murder took place. However, by the time you had called the police, it was already 6.45 p.m. <laughs> there is clearly a 15-minute gap here. Do you deny it? I think this court would like to hear what you were doing during this 15-minute gap. The witness was in shock at the time after witnessing a terrible murder. It would only, it's only to expect that he would be a little gay. Fifteen minutes is hardly what I call a little gay. Mr. Wellington. Yes? Explain yourself. What were you doing during those 15 minutes? <laughs> Answer the question. Spit it out! I... I was searching for a phone booth! A phone booth? You mean you don't have a cell phone? You and your questions as if you're trying to open all the layers of a matryoshka doll! You must think you're really something special! Witness!
I need the question is. Mr. Cheesesteak, where is your cell phone right now? I'll have you know. See, here it is. Oh. I see. Hmm. Looks like you got a cell phone. Hmm. Looks like you got a phone. And I thought that just maybe that was his. I think we've cleared this as well. At the time of the murder, the witness did not have his cell phone because he had lost it. Therefore, the delay in his call was caused by a search for a phone booth. I guess you could put it that way and leave it at that. Do you have any further questions, Mr. Wright? There's something. Your Honor, the witness testimony does not make any sense. I don't believe there. I don't believe that there was ever a need for a witness to search for a phone. How did you? I'll hurt you. You can't just make outrageous claims like that! You, you have some sort of proof, don't you? You do have some sort of proof, don't you? <laughs> well... Yeah, oh, of course this evidence should be good enough, I think. Alright, let's have this proof then. Please present proof that the witness had no need to search for a public phone booth. Um, well, we see here. There's a phone booth right there! In that picture, there's a phone booth right there! You didn't have to look that hard for it. Here you go. Genius! Quite simple, actually. Please look at this. At the crime scene photo. Is there a saddle with it? Oh, there's nothing wrong with the picture. But if you don't understand my logic after looking at it, something is wrong with you!
Mr. Cheesesteak, why did you not use the phone that was right in front of you? The witness can't explain what he was doing for those 15 minutes. That is reason enough to throw suspicion on his testimony. Yes. This is very true. Well, what do you have to say for yourself, witness? that she was going to return it to him. So there was no reason for him to kill for it. And on top of that, we still have the phone she found anyway. Hmm. But if he wasn't looking for his cell phone, maybe he was looking for something else. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Do you have any thoughts you would like to share with the court? Can you offer an explanation as to what the witness was doing those 15 minutes? I have an idea. There is only one possible explanation. Let's hear your explanation. I'll be forewarned that if your explanation is not persuasive, you will be penalizing carefully before you present, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, I probably should have said that there was only one possibility. Please present to the court the one piece of evidence that will answer the photo. Why didn't the witness call the police right away? <laughs> Sir, he asked why. Mr. Cheesesteak Wellington. What? Don't do that. You almost gave me a heart attack. These are your glasses, aren't they? These glasses are, in fact, yours. I'll tell you 
where they were found, Mr. Cheesesteak. These glasses were found under the victim's body. knew that he had to find his glasses and search frantically for them. What he didn't realize was that they were under the victim's body. And that is why it took him 15 minutes to make that call. as the real murderer? Of course. That is precisely what I am doing. I know I'm right. He is the real murderer. Did you figure it out, Nick? Carlos. Turns out this cell phone was the key to this case after all. Anyway, now is our chance to deep six this guy. I'll sink him in. One shot. Yeah. This is so exciting watching you work again. Yeah, 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 yeah
from a different perspective. Let's hear your explanation as to why you are not the murderer. Why? That's... That's easy. Um... Uh, for example, there's some the names of Victim Rose. What about that? Oh, you mean the name Maggie? M A G G I E? Yes, even an idiot like you can read that, right? But we already know this was not written by the victim himself. After all, the defendant's name is Maggay, M-A-G-G-E-Y, and the victim was left-handed. In other words, in order to make the defendant look guilty, the real criminal used the victim's right hand to write her name on the ground. <laughs> When I mean that the real, real criminal, when, when someone the, the, the defendant knew, otherwise, how else would that person know her name was Maggie with I or E Y? That is a good point. The witness didn't even know of Miss Bird before this trial. Ah, I forgot. Hmm. Was there any way this creep would have known Maggie's name beforehand? There was a way. It would be best if I could prove that the witness had a chance to learn that the defendant's name was Matt Gay. Now, will the defense please present its case? How could the how could the witness have known the defendant's name? This is how. Am I supposed to take this as a Am I supposed to take this as evidence that the defense doesn't know what's going on? like a five-year-old, take some responsibility! <laughs> Else if I need a lecture about responsibility for you all people. The defense will receive a perfect out! Oh. I read that one. Now. That's 
before. Before. Gotcha. I had to do it at least once. Mr. Cheesesteak. You didn't have your cell phone with you on the day of the murder, correct? So what if I did? When you realized you had it lost, what did you do? What did I do? Didn't you try to find it by calling it? What did you... How did you... Go on, these questions have nothing to do with... Overruled. Mr. Wright, why are you going with this line of question? Do you think there is some relation between the witness, cell phone, and the murder? I do, Your Honor. On the night of the murder, Maggie Bird picked up a lost phone in the park. And... She also received a phone call from the owner of the phone. Jairus! That was when you learned her. That was when you learned her. That was when you learned that her name was Maggie. Uh, uh, <clears throat> but you made one fatal mistake. A fatal mistake. My client's name is Maggie. That was written on the ground was Maggie. It's a mistake that could only occur if all you knew was how her name sounded. <laughs>
It's very simple, Your Honor. Are you sure, Nick? If I said I can't offer an explanation, then the trial's over, right? Yeah, but... Now then, please present to the... Now then, please present to this court proof that the witness had a motive. Well, he had a motive. This is it right here. That's what I wanted to show, which I showed out of order. Mr. Chief Six Motives is right here. What is this? A list. These phone numbers were pulled from the memory of the phone the defendant found. And we have determined that the people on this list are members of a certain group. You... You looked up all those numbers?! Of course. This list of phone numbers was stored in the cell phone's memory. The names and numbers belong to a certain... The names and numbers belong to people who are members of a certain communist group. Can you explain why these numbers were on your phone, Mr. Cheesesteak Wellington? <laughs> Looking up at the phone number is not a bad phone is web crime is not it You're one of those people You're just like the cops who raided that brilliant artist Marty's Utrio Atir they disrupted a genius at work and interrupted his dialogue with the goddess of... Who the fuck cares? I don't care, Mr. Cheesesteak Wellington. All I want is for you to tell us what this list is about. You think you, any of you, know what it's like to be a refined man such as me? A justified badgery of the witness. Objection overruled. Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? Why would 
then we just have the numbers of a group of con artists on this room. Isn't that obvious? The witnesses. A member of said group. Mr. Welling is a member of this very group. <laughs> All of your friends' phone numbers are stored right here on this phone. If anyone were to look into these phone numbers, it would be all over for you. That is why you had to kill. No. No, this is too much! does make quite a bit of sense. Well, Mr. Weddington, would you care to explain? I, um, I... I got you now. I... I... Stop, police officer. <laughs> you had it. What is it, Mr. Payne? You said that the exact you said the exact same thing only a few seconds ago. promised that she would return the phone after that old Mr. Willington had to do with me, Miss Bird, to get his phone back. Why then, would he need to kill anyone? That is a valid point. What does the defense think about this? If you think about it, logically, then it makes sense. Then maybe we should be thinking outside the box. Yeah. If we think like that, maybe that slime ball saw something at the crime scene that made him commit murder. Your fault, Mr. Wright. Hmm. Well... I don't think Mr. Wellington went to pick up his phone in a very friendly manner. Uh, 
thought that he was promised his son, so why would he have been unfriendly to the six pendants? I think he must have seen something that didn't agree with him when he got there. Well, then, Mr. Wright, what was it something that didn't agree with the witches? What Mr. Wellington saw was the victim. The <laughs> victim? You mean Dustin Prince? Dustin Prince had gone on his date right after his ship was over. With no time to change, he went to the park still wearing his police uniform. Oh! They picked up my phone with, that, with a policeman. He couldn't have known they were going out, so he began to worry. He was afraid the policeman would ask a few questions before returning the phone. If I don't, if I do anything suspicious, he might write a check on my phone. In his mind, it was possible they had already run a check on the phone. And he went into a panic, is that what you're saying? Yep, that's what happened. He freaked out. Exactly. <laughs> Officer Prince was murdered simply because he was in uniform. <laughs> Mr. Peng, do you have any comments? I... I... Um... I'm thinking. Hmm. It seems the truth has come out at last. The witness, Mr. Wellington, you are... He did it the first time, and nobody caught that. He kissed it the second time, he did the Pinocchio face. What's that supposed to mean? The 
<laughs> I already told you earlier. That what I love. I've already found it. You don't have even the slightest idea who the phone is your hand belongs to. But you can be sure it is mine, you simpleton! What? <laughs> it feels good to see you swim. <laughs> we don't seem to have a problem on our hands this far. What form is it without knowing that its meaning is evident? Your Honor! Oh, well. I can't let the turtle tails away like this. Oh, it's so cool. There has to be something I can look. Maybe there's got to be, hmm, maybe. I got it. We should check for fingerprints. Fingerprints? Yes, Your Honor, Mr. Cheesesteak must have left some prints on his phone. Nick, don't you remember? You got that from Maggie. You wiped it off. I what? You said that there was sand all over it, so... White wiped it. I wiped it. Okay, thoroughly too. So much fun watching third rate trash babble like morons among themselves. <laughs> oh! He's made a complete recovery! How many times do I have to say this? My phone is right here, you see? Oh, and incidentally, you can't check the numbers stored on this phone.
it must have glitched because all the numbers just magically disappear. Mr. Wellington. What's this? By the tone of your voice, it sounds like you still have some fight left in you. Where did you finally find your cell phone? <laughs> oh, you are too much. <laughs> and of course, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Now I remember. Looks like they hung up. Good. I finally found it. What's wrong, Mr. Attorney? What a harsh glare in your eyes. Nick, we've worked so hard to get this far, but if you don't do something quick, he's gotta get he's going to get off scot free. I know. I know this phone has to be his. But how am I supposed to prove something like that? Right. If you can approve who the owner of that cell phone is, your indictment has no basis and therefore no power. It 
Looks like you came up a penny short. The court hereby concludes the cross examination. <laughs> if that will be all, I'll have to bid you, gentlemen and ladies, goodbye. I have a reservation at that ultra fancy restaurant on the upper side of town. Thank you for your assistance. You had a stressful day, so please, bon appetit. What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to just let it go like that? Idiotty! <laughs> Mateo! Please wait, Your Honor. All right, Nick. I think I may be able to prove it. Prove it. Prove what, Mr. Wright? Everything. <laughs> Your Honor, the cross examination has already ended. Besides, the defense is just going to match the witness with more benign questions. You will not arouse the witness. Is that clear, Mr. Wright? Uber douchebag. Did you hear that? No harassment allowed, Mr. Attorney. I am a. <laughs> Did you hear that? No harassment allowed, Mr. Attorney. I'm a millennial. Wait, Your Honor. Very well, but this is your last chance, Mr. Wright. You may present one piece of evidence to the court. I only get one shot at this. If you cannot prove everything. It's over. For your clients and for you. Do you fully understand? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, sir. I'm sure you are well aware, Your Honor, but the cross examination period has ended.
Well, are you paying attention, Mr. Payne? I said that Mr. Wright could present only one piece of evidence. And now then, Mr. Wright, this is your last chance. It all comes down to this. Go time. Please, present the one piece of evidence that will explain everything. Um, well, um... Here you go. My... Cuddle! Why... Thank you. Oh, nice. You, Yuichi Naruhoto. Yeah, please have one of mine. Written in fancy script, the ink is strong and clear, but I still can't read it. Wait, what am I doing? This isn't the time to be exchanging business cards. Your Honor, there is something very important about that card, and that is... The bat. This card is important because of what is on the back. Hmm? You realize your cell phone number on the back, but... But that's exactly it. Can you please call this number from your cell phone? Huh? Right now, the court is still session. It's okay. You'll see. Okay, if you say so. Is the defense preparing something, Mr. Wright? We are going to call my cell phone now. And then the court will see everything for what it is. Smirch the name of Tanasma. I do that to most of the, most of the numbers. That's what happens when I usually let my phone ring out. Because most times, whenever my phone rings, Dungeons and Donuts, they're scam calls. No real calls. Only only few. By chance, do I get a real call? So it's like everyone out of ten, I get a real call with somebody actually talking to me. And sadly, the only people that actually do call are my cousin and my and my voice coach. Only two people that actually do call. Well, that any old man when he really wants some, but. No, that's besides the point. You don't really want anything. Mr. Wellington. Hmm. 
How strange. I could almost swear that you're holding my phone. Yes, my phone. No! 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 By the way, before I forget, thank you very much for the lump on my head this morning. I don't think I need to explain any further except to say... I'm a little bitch. When you went to retrieve your cell phone, you mistakenly took the wrong one. Gyrus! Rollerball! He commits sepulchre. <laughs> and he's dead. So I can do this right now. All this in two parts. <laughs> so that is what's happened. You were not off by Mr. Willing. He is a man who lives on his pride and self image alone. And in order to hide his involvement with the con artist group, he has become paranoid and has lost all ability to make rational judgments. Mr. Ray, the phone is here holding. It's Mr. Wellington's. Speaking of that man, how is he, Mr. Fay? Uh, he's... he was arrested and has been taken away, Your Honor. Very well. And now then, this court finds the defendant, Maggie Bird. Not... Duty. Cast in the name of God. Ye not guilty. Ah, 
that is all. This court is adjourned. September 8, 2, 16 p.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby, number one. She is like the ideal girlfriend right now. <sighs> you! <laughs> I knew that the real you would shine through! It's the tree! Yeah, this is going up too. I am so moved by what you've done for me, sir. My tits are proud. They're blossoming. Thank you so much, Mr. Ray. Almost every kind of disaster, and never once or even tied at a game of tic tac toe. My life has been nothing but a string of disasters. That is pretty bad. So she's a maiden of misfortune. I've been told I went to college, I was known as the goddess of misfortune. Ah, uh, yes, you're a bad luck schlep rock. Okay. And then at the academy, everyone called me Lady Luckless. Lady Luckless. What's worse is that my misfortune always seems to latch on to those around me. What do you mean? When I see someone in trouble, I always try to help. Ah, uh, that's right. You were talking about this earlier. You happened again recently, sister. There was an old lady pacing back and forth by the pedestrian crosswalk. I gave her my hand, and before I knew it, we were having dinner at my house. What was so bad about that? Oh. I'm sure that Dustin's gone because of me. That's not true! That glut didn't even have any sort of special meaning. It was just a present to say thanks for covering one of my night shifts. Oh, I see. Everything is all my fault, Dustin's death. Your head being all messed up. Uh, well, I don't think my head is that messed up yet. 
my kids are still proud. I'm going to find a new life for myself starting now. The next time we meet, I'm sure I'll, I'm sure I'll have a I, I'm sure I'll have found a whole ocean's worth of good luck by then, sir. Yeah, after all, the goddess of misfortune is only a name. You bet! I'm gonna make it, I promise! Next time we meet, I'll only be an unlucky person instead of a goddess. Yeah! That's the spirit? Okay. Good luck to you. Come back to the day. Thanks. You take care of yourself too. Everything really did come back to me. Someone I've had clashes with in the past or in certain cases. But he's also been a good ally during others. This dude, I don't know who the fuck he is. This person, I haven't got a clue. He seems to know me, but maybe he's mistaken me for someone else.
Maya. You. You five members. This is Maya Faye, my sister. That's right. She gave me so many. Head I mean, I have so many unforgettable memories about her. For example, Ask Nick, what's wrong? You just stand at me, don't tell me you miss me. Uh, well, yeah, I suppose I am. I feel like I haven't seen you in ages. You haven't sucked me off like I, I mean. Well, I'm back now, so it's time for us to create new memories together. Alright, sounds good. All the phone numbers on my phone were raised by Mr. Wallace. I guess we have to start over from the very beginning. Come on, Nick. Let's go to my usual burger joint. Okay, okay. Actually, it hasn't even been that long since you came back into my life. The length of these cases are going to make up for, like, say, the shortness of the, of the missions. And that story, that story began on one rainy afternoon two months ago. And so we ended the first episode, The Lost Turnabout. to episode two, Reunion and Turnabout. Which introduces us to a whole cast of new characters plus a new feature that was pretty much a stable to the rest of the series. The Psyche Lock. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to stop here. And in the next part, we start up Episode 2, Reunion and Turnabout. So stay tuned. More of Phoenix Wright, Justice for All, revisited right after this. Thanks so much for watching. <laughs>